Section 10.1, the chi-square distribution. In this chapter, we'll be discussing a couple new kinds of hypothesis tests, which will require the use of a new probability distribution. So instead of the normal curve or the t-curve, we're going to use this new one called chi-square. Um, it's a Greek letter. It looks like this, like a fancy x with a square on it, x chi-square. Um, and so you can see it below. I'll color code it. Um, just like the t-curve, it changes with degrees of freedom. So we'll start off with degrees of freedom 4, and you can see it's a little bit right skewed. Um, and then the next one is degrees of freedom 8. It gets a little bit less right skewed. And then as we jump up to 16 and keep going, you'll notice it starts to look a little more and more normal. So let's take a few notes about it, and then we'll use the curve. So the total area under the chi-square curve is always 1. And that's again has to do with probabilities add up to one. Um, Chi-square curves are right skewed. You can visually see that in the graph above. And they're not symmetric. So it's different from the normal curve. And you'll notice they don't have a tail on both ends. If you look closely on the left, they start at zero, so th there is no tail on the left. So they start at zero, and then they extend indefinite, indefinitely to the right while the height of the curve approaches zero. So this is just telling us there's a tail on the right only. Versus the normal curve right had a tail on both sides. So this one doesn't go to any negative numbers, right? Since it doesn't go over here, there's no negative infinity, no negative numbers. Um, as the degrees of freedom increase, the shape of the chi-square curve starts to look more and more like a normal curve. And you can maybe see that a little bit in the graph above. And then this is where the chi-square curve gets weird. The mean of the chi-square curve is actually equal to its degrees of freedom. So this part's very different than before. So we'll see it in the examples below. So combining this with the fact that the distribution is right skewed, um, we can use this to say that the peak will occur slightly before the chi-square value corresponding to degrees of freedom. So if we have a chi-square, let's say degrees of freedom is 5, then 5 will be slightly before the peak. And that's because the mean is, will be near the peak. So let's use chi-square on the calculator. So if you don't have it out, um, go get your calculator and come back. If you have it out, let's go. Um, so it's going to be similar to normal CDF and TCDF, but it's going to be called chi-square CDF. So let's sketch the curve, and then we'll find it on the TI-89. So we're going to draw chi-square, so there's only a tail on the right. It's a right-skewed curve. It's not a normal curve. Um, degrees of freedom equals 11 means my peak is around 11. And then we want to find the area to the right of 18.22. So 18.22, I'll just estimate it's somewhere to the right of 11. And then the area to the right means we shade to the right. And chi-square CDF will be very similar to all our other ones. So just like normal CDF and TCDF, we do lower, comma, upper. So my lower would be 18.22. Since we keep going forever, my upper will be 10 to the 99. And then like um, the T-curve, we have to add degrees of freedom, which is 11. We'll talk about how to find that later, but we'll know degrees of freedom for now. So it's going to be in that same menu as before. We're going to go to second distribution, same menu where normal and T were. Um, and chi-square CDF might be a different number, but it should be around 8, depending on your calculator. Every calculator has slightly different functions, so it should be around there. Uh, make sure you do CDF, not PDF. And then we'll do lower is 18.22, upper 10 to the 99, and degrees of freedom is 11. And that'll tell us area. So nothing too new, just a new function on the calculator. But concepts are the same. And that's area 
to the right. So let's try one more. And then we'll do actual hypothesis tests in the next section. So we'll do area to the left of chi-square equals 3.055. So that's like a z-score, but instead it's chi-square. And degrees of freedom is 6. So we'll draw a right-skewed curve, because chi-square is always right-skewed. Degrees of freedom 6 should be around the peak. And then we want to find the area to the left of 3.055. So I just have to approximate where that is. But it's somewhere on the left of 6. And then we'll do chi-square, CDF. My lower is actually zero because there are no negative, there's no tail. My upper is 3.055. And degrees of freedom is six. And then if you have your calculator out, go ahead and try that one more time. So lower, upper, degrees of freedom. And you should get an area of about 1.981. Sorry, 0.1981. Right, probabilities are always less than one. And there we go. Not too bad, right? And then here's just directions for the chi-square function on the calculator. So it's in that distribution menu that we've been using a lot. Um, depending on your calculator, you might have to go farther down so you can use those arrows to find it if you had trouble finding it. And it'll be lower, upper degrees of freedom. So we'll use this function when we do some hypothesis tests in the next two sections.